Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we are going to be doing a video slightly out of the normal wheelhouse, however I feel it's very important. I've got a special guest here today, this is Dietrich with Skinny Medic over on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. He also runs a business called MedicalGearOutfitters.com, sells all kind of very, very useful medical supplies and things like that. Today we're going to be going over what uh, composes a trauma kit the things that you should look to put in a trauma kit. And I suppose the question, uh, what, what, really what I would ask, I guess, in the beginning of this video would be, why does jo Joe Blow need a trauma kit? Why would anybody even want to bother trying to, to treat wounds and, and disasters that go this far reaching? Because accidents happen. I mean, real world, real life stuff, car wreck, chainsaws, axes, you're at the range, public range, uh, things happen and um, you can bleed out very quickly. Things can turn bad very quickly while you're waiting on EMS to get there. Uh, and you can absolutely save a life by using medical trauma supplies. Mm. Um, probably I would say more often you're going to draw your firearm. That's okay. So I think, you know, we all want to have the cool you know, uh, sidearms to protect ourselves, protect our family. Uh, but at the same time, we want to have medical supplies to protect our family as well. So Agreed. kind of, you know, we... Uh, my company, Medical Gear Outfitters, we have pre-made kits, but we also have the supplies. So if someone wants to build their own kit, then you can. And that's kind of what we want to do with this video is to say, hey, look, if you're at the, at the uh, shop and you find a good deal on, say, a cat tourniquet or something like that, pick it up. Like We're going to give you some items to show to kind of help when you start building your trauma kit because they can get expensive. Uh, but if you buy them piece by piece, then the wife doesn't notice. That's right. Well, you know, we, we had Dietrich down before and we did a video on a couple of his kind of pre-made kits. We sort of unboxed those and showed them off. So if you want to see some of his pre-made kits that are ready to go, it's a little outside of the wheelhouse of this video. You can check that video out. We'll put a link to that in the description box below. And I want to add one more thing before we start going over this stuff. A lot of people tend to kind of think, oh, well, you know, maybe I don't like guns or maybe I don't want to be around guns or, you know, maybe people take this just completely passive view when it comes to personal protection. And look, if you're that person, I, I don't recommend it. However, we're free to do what we want in this country for now, I guess. But, <laughs> but we are free to, to have clear choice and to do what we want. And, you know, if you think about it, there is no more passive way to protect your family. If that is your thing, then being medically prepared to be able to take care of everything from boo-boos and cuts and scrapes all the way to a potential, you know, bad situation happening where you've really got to stop some serious bleeding. So I want to mention that. Like, medical gear transcends everything. At the end of the day, if someone gets hurt or shot or whatever the, the situation is, the, where the rubber meets the road is the stuff that's on this table is going to ultimately save your life. Even if you're not a gun person, you don't have to be a gun person to appreciate what's being put out in this video. I just want to make that clear. I mean, I know people tend to not think that way. They, they, yeah. they tend to think, oh, it'll never happen to me. I've got my gun. You know, oh, I could never. I mean, heck, well, Chad's family member. I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna mention <laughs> one specifically, but we had a family member accidentally shoot himself. I mean, look, you don't always intend to be the recipient of a bullet, but yep. sometimes you sh you could shoot yourself. Accidents happen. So being ready, I, I, th I just wanted to mention that in this video. I think it's important. We see like you know. training ramp up, people looking for my videos and looking for training classes right after a major event. Sure. Whether that be Las Vegas, Florida, something like that. A major event happens, people are like, oh my gosh, I want some training. I want to sure. know how to put a tourniquet on. So having the equipment and the knowledge, super important. Um, and get it prepared now because when the event happens, it's too uh, late. You can't be googling how to put a tourniquet on, how to put a chest seal on. Like I no. would, you can FaceTime me. I would, you know, I'll do that. But <laughs> um, you know, that's not the right time. Now is the time to get prepared. Right. And hopefully, it's, this is like good healthcare insurance. Like you want really good healthcare insurance, but you don't have to use it. Um, so that's what the medical supplies are. I feel like at least is that you know you want really good medical equipment, good knowledge on how to use it but hopefully you never use it. Well, you know, firearms tend to be the tool of self-preservation in that moment, right? Well, these are the tools of preserving life as it's in danger at that time. You know, if, and look, if the ambulance is 20 minutes away, well, guess what? This kit's here now. You can do something. You can make a difference. So I think it's important uh, to mention that. You want to go over some items here? And... Yeah, so we'll start with the pouches over okay. there. Like I think keeping your supplies organized in a time of emergency is important knowing where your items are at, how they're stored, where your trauma kit is located, all needs to be figured out prior to the emergency. Um, and that way during you're not scrambling like, where did I put that tourniquet? Where did I put the pressure band and stuff like that? 
This is a really cool kit here. Um, it's ACU. You know, people either love or hate ACU, uh, but it's a it's a good kit. It just needs to be labeled. It's a first aid kit. Uh, but you have places for tourniquets, uh, pressure bandages. Uh, it's a U.S. made pouch. Made in North American Rescue makes it. Um, that red pouch there is mine. Uh, we designed it. It's made in the USA as well. And then we have the ankle kit, which is something not a lot of people are thinking about, but it's something kind of new. Is that's a complete trauma kit there. I get my Vanna White going. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I wish Vanna White was here. She could sell some trauma kits. I would. <laughs> yeah, she could definitely sell. So, but you could put that, you could take that airport, all that stuff, it's good to go. You can travel with it and you can have a complete trauma kit on your ankle. So having a kit put together is important. Does, Legit. So thinking about supplies, um, you know, we think about our protection as well. Um, I like having a good pair of gloves in there. Uh, some people will wear like the black gloves, so they want to look tactical with it. But it's really hard to see blood on the black gloves. So we have gloves here. Um, safety glasses is important as well. We talk about bright red blood squirting. Um, you know, people we wear eye protection. We go to the range, but then when someone has a lot of blood coming out, we don't really think about that. So having the safety glasses is important. Uh, also, I put a mask in my kits. Because if you watch your little kid play video games, what do they do with their mouth? It's open. We do it. Like if we're concentrating on something, we'll open our mouth. So I don't want blood in my mouth. So I, I put a mask in there. That way if there's blood flying up, I can just protect myself there. Um, the other thing I put in my kits is some kind of light. Like a chem stick, a chem light, break these open, hang them inside of a car. Because nothing typically happens at a 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 75 degrees. The sun's Usually shining. 1 o'clock in the morning. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's raining. It's foggy. So having to be able to see is important. Uh, I would say not only being able to see, you know, for treating your victim, so to speak, or, you know, the person you're trying to treat, but also, heck, even if you're out on the highway and you need a few of these to throw out to make sure that no car comes by and hits you when you're exactly. on the side of the road or something. I mean, that's handy, too. When you finish up dealing with it, uh, a lot of times we may not have access to warm soapy water to wash our hands with. Uh, so hand sanitizer, putting your kit that way, when you, if you do get blood on your hands or your arms, you can wipe it down. That at least buys you some time to get some warm soapy water. That way, seems you, that that gets overlooked, and a lot of people don't think about. All right, what happens now? I got you know blood all over me. I've got the the patient you know it, dealt with. People don't think about that. Like you see the news outlets reporting these videos, and people, you know, teachers are covered in blood. And we don't really think about gloves because we're going to just go to work. And so the hand sanitizer is something that everybody thinks about afterwards. So it's kind of one of those things nobody really thinks about. So we, I wanted to add it in here. Smart. The other thing we can think about is treating like massive bleeding. Like this is like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. um, so having a tourniquet, uh, whichever you choose, um, you know, you can go expensive, like the soft tea or the cat. Uh, those are probably 30 bucks retail, somewhere around there. Uh, kind of expensive. You can go cheaper. Uh, you can even go to like triangle bandages. Like if you're on a budget, a triangle bandage can be improvised and made a tourniquet. So having some kind of tourniquet is important. Uh, whether you want to go like top of the line, like $30, or you want to go like budget for a few dollars, you can have triangle bandages there. So something for everybody. Something for everybody. And that's kind of what I want to do in this video, like show like top of the line and then show a budget item too, because sure. not everybody has the budget uh, that other people have. You don't so. have to spend a ton of money to get a kit that will save your life. Exactly, they can make a difference. Uh, you can put some galls in there, like we have the 4x4s and 5x9s here, uh, just for like minor to moderate bleeding here. Uh, the 4x4s are kind of for minor bleeding, like scratches and stuff like that. And then the 5x9s are for the moderate bleeding. So something you'd really want to be able to put some pressure yep. on. The, okay. And then over here we have some uh, compressed galls. Like this is just regular compressed galls here. But when you unwrap this, it's a huge thing of galls, just in this little bitty pack. It doesn't take up a lot of space. The other items you can look at are like the hemostatic agents, like the sea locks, the combat galls, and stuff sure. like that. So there again, you're talking a few dollars for a box of these. Uh, you're talking like a few dollars for this pack here. And now we're getting to more expensive items. So here. the hemostatics, these have coagulants in they them? They do. Okay. Um, so like these here are quick clots. And these work well. The U.S. Uh, military is using them. Um, they have x-ray strip. They work fantastic. The Sealox one too is kind of making a move though. Like I, that's why I want to talk to you about. Like the Sealox, it there's a study just came out and it works better in the cold environment. Also works better for patients who are on blood thinners. Say sure. like you have AFib or for whatever reason you have a problem with clotting, this is going to work better. Uh, it's made out of shrimp cells, kind of sort of, but they take out the iodine, makes you allergic to it, they take it out of it. Uh, so Sealox is another good option that not a lot of people have heard about, but it's a great choice along with that to use. Let me ask you a question about these coagulants. It, now, 
I've heard people say that they're very painful. They burn really bad. Now, now, I'm just saying, if you're hurt, I mean, dying or not dying, okay, I'm going to take the painful route. Look, you're already hurt, but I just want that. I want to reiterate that with you and ask you that because the thing is, if you're, let's just say, treating a guy or whatever and you go to put one of these on and they, you know, they're already, I guess, screaming bloody murder and they scream even more bloody murder, just understand that it, it probably will add, it, it does hurt. Yes, it does hurt. Uh, right. It doesn't burn to say it's like actually burn the... The first generation stuff that first came out, yeah. it burns. Like, it was causing third degree burns. Yeah. But this is not going to feel comfortable. Like, my finger's going right. to be in your pelvis, not the good way. Um, and this is going to hurt. <laughs> so, this is not going to be fun. Um, you know, you're going to be cussing. It's going to be very painful. Just want to mention that, that that there is, you know, they do hurt. Even with the tourniquets. Like we kind of oh, skipped over that, too. Like, right. the tourniquets. If I put a tourniquet on your arm or leg, it's going to hurt. Yes. Um, so having, this is not a fun time, but this is to save your life for me to get you to the hospital, get you to the emergency room. So uh, not going to feel good. Yeah, I mean, that tourniquet, it's, it's got to squeeze through muscle and it's, it's got to literally get down against the bone. Like It's got to clamp down to stop that bleeding and it, it's, it's uncomfortable. The other thing you can look at is like a pressure bandage. Like I have the Israeli pressure bandage here. Oh, that's a fantastic. You can find these pretty reasonably priced, especially in the expired ones. Uh, you can pick these up really nice, uh, really cheap. There's a lot of cool things you can do with this one. The other one I like is the Elias. The Elias bandage is really cool. It has compressed gauze in here. It has a piece of plastic you can use for a chest seal. Uh, so if you're looking for like a get home bag or you know a, a tool that can be used for multiple things, the Elias pressure bandage is something you may want to look at. And it's pretty reasonably priced. You're talking about like 15 bucks, something like that for this bandage. You can find these, you know, twelve, thirteen dollars, maybe we'll give or take a little bit on these. So definitely an investment on definitely those. Definitely an investment that can be used for multiple purpose purposes. No, no, these these are also compressed, right? They get bigger yes. when you okay. Yep, so they're compressed down. Um, and then when you open them up, this is actually two vacuum seal packs in there. You open this one here, and then when you open up the other one, there's another vacuum seal. So for me, in my trauma kit, I take off the gray packaging and leave the other one on there. So, keep so this is going to be a dumb question, but I'm assuming this is to keep it sterile, obviously. It does. And that's okay. why it has an expiration date, because it needs to be kept sterile. So if you okay. can find them expired at a gun show or something like that, I would pick them up. Really? No problems there. Well, I, I know you've said this before, but I want to mention this too, is that, I mean, yeah, you want your tools to be sterile, but at the end of the day, you can treat infection. But if the patient's dead, you can't treat infection. Exactly. Okay. Right. So... I, I'd rather roll the dice there. Exactly. I think I'll take an expired bandage and Even if uh, I have to use a, you know, if we don't have any galls, I had to use a t-shirt. Like, I'm going to use your t-shirt to stop bleeding. I can get you some antibiotics at the hospital, stuff like that. But you've got to keep the red stuff on the inside. That's like, right. That, that's important. Uh, so once we get the major bleeding control, uh, we probably can look at someone's airway. That's a, something we can look at. I mean, you can just, uh, an MPA, a nose hose, mm -hmm. is what that's for. And um, it goes inside their nose, protects their tongue from falling back in their throat. Uh, pretty easy to put in. It does take a little bit of training, uh, but it's not bad uh, for the average person to put in. Cool. Then, uh, once we got airway taken care of, we look at their breathing. So let's look at chest seals. And people overlook chest seals. Like we think about massive bleeding tourniquets, but chest seals, this is a large surface area. You're going to like turn. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the chest seals, like this is a large area that may get hit. Like your back, stuff like that. So we have. There again, we can go expensive, like mm -hmm. the hyphen chest seals are probably $15, $16, $18, somewhere there, um, give or take. And then th these are kind of expensive, but they work. They're super sticky. Uh, they rip your chest hair off. They're good. But you could go even like this, like petroleum galls. We actually, this is what's on every ambulance in America just about for a chest seal. We open it up, we throw the galls away, and we use the packaging for a chest seal. So you can do that, tape it on, and you have a chest seal. These are like a dollar. I know one thing they teach in like the combat lifesaver course in the military is to use like MRE packets. You can. You know, this kind of that heavy Cigarette plastic. Cigarette packs. Like I've heard all kinds of like, I yeah. mean. It's, you just got to be able to stop the air from, there's a pressure difference there. So. And then that's also entry and exit. Yep. So that's why these come in packs of two for both sides. Absolutely. Yeah. So then having some tape kind of roll into the tape thing, like this is just good quality cloth tape. Um, duct tape. Like we're down south. We can fix everything with duct tape. So That's having right. duct tape in your kit is something else you want to look at. Um, and then once you get all the cool, sexy trauma stuff done, like we got to keep the patient warm. Like you would be surprised of how well these little cheap Mylar blankets work. I mean, it's cold outside today. I mean, it's what, 40s, 50s. 
Uh, I don't like cold, rainy weather outside. So if something happens, you go into shock, your body temperature is going to start lowering down very quickly, and that will kill you faster than anything else. So uh, we can give, keep them warm, a mylar blanket that you can pick up at outdoor store, Amazon, or my store, uh, anywhere like that is uh, going to save someone's life after you've done the major trauma stuff. Another thing we did kind of skipped over was the um, trauma shears. Being exposed, you, if you can't see it, you can't fix it. That's so right. So having a good pair of trauma shears in your kit is going to be important as well. So uh, we kind of have everything. This is for like nasty trauma. We didn't have any bandage or anything like that. Right. I mean, you could add, certainly add those. You could look at adding like Tylenol or Benadryl, sure. but this is for major trauma. Yeah, I mean, and, and there's lots of other things that are going to be kind of specific to your individual case as well. So, you know, we're talking trauma, but let's say you're going on a trek in the woods and you want to have a snake bite kit. Or let's just say you've got youngsters who might be allergic to uh, certain insects or something like that. Obviously, Benadryl can help with, you know, that kind of stuff as well as any like prescription medications you might have for like your children for certain things, you know, EpiPens, you, might, like EpiPens, yeah. you know, I know those can be difficult to get in quantity and I know they're, they're sort of hard to get and they're expensive, but right. you know, EpiPens, that's sort of a different thing. Um, another thing too is like finger splints. Mm -hmm. uh, those are handy to have, especially with small children. You know, if, if a child, you know, falls the wrong way and hurts their finger, you know, it may just be a sprain or something like that, or, you know, or not just more of a, I guess, what would you call it? Like nerve, like the nerves being kind of pulled the wrong yeah. way or causing just some, some nerve pain and all. Sometimes just, uh, you know, isolating that finger with a splint can kind of help, you know, not get worse or whatever. So there's little extra things that you can look at. I mean, and look, in terms of band-aids, I, I know this is just a weird thing. To, I mean, maybe people don't consider this, but I like those dang band-aids that have that like heavy cloth material. Um, they're, I don't even know who makes them, but I guess it's the band-aid brand or whatever. But I like those band-aids that have got that just really heavy, super heavy-duty waterproof cloth. Because, mm -hmm. man, we're always out like fishing. In, in fact, it happened uh, one time we were out fishing, and Chad... Uh, Let's just say Chad had had a few, right? <laughs> so we were fishing in about two feet of water on this oyster bar down in Florida. And you know, oysters are really sharp, right? Well, I think he, uh, I think he was relieving himself on the edge of the boat and he proceeded to <clears throat> fall over the edge of the boat. No. Well, that was what, your fault. Well, okay, well, what, what do you do when you fall, right? You, you brace yourself, right? Your hands go down. What do you do is put his hands down, got up and had a gnarly cut on his hand. I'm talking, I'm talking where like you pull it to the side and like you, you just about see the bone. Like it, nice. it just about cut him down to the bone. Well, this this is a this should be an example, right? Didn't hardly have any medical equipment on the boat. We did have duct tape. Nice. So we he took a section of his t shirt, cut it off, wrapped it around, wrapped it with duct tape, we kept fishing. There you go. You so know, <laughs> improvised medicine is a real thing, so that works. I mean and, and it was a lot of blood. I mean, you know, he was bleeding a lot. Okay, so sometimes so the little cuts and scrapes, don't take that for granted. I just replaced it with alcohol. <laughs> I mean, well, okay. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure your blood was a little thinner. Probably right? was a little bit thinner, <laughs> so that's probably an issue there. Yeah, don't take it for granted, though. The little cuts and scrapes uh, can turn into a worse problem if you're not prepared to stop it. I mean, some of those tiny cuts, man, they bleed like mad. See, like you said, you like the big, robust Band-Aids. I like, like the My Little Pony Princess Band-Aids. Really? Because then you're like, all right, Chad, here's a little My Little Pony Band-Aid. Get back to fishing. Well, so. the reason I was going to, well, the reason I mentioned that style of Band-Aid is because it seems like any time I cut my hands, it's either chopping firewood or fishing or hunting or cleaning fish with a fillet knife or I'm dressing out a deer and I slip and cut my finger and it's always you got your hands covered in blood or fish guts or water or you, you got your hand down the bait bucket trying to get a piece of bait out something like that so those band-aids do a great job because you can just kind of wrap them tight and they're reasonably waterproof they do a pretty they do. good job they do they do a good job and especially sweat if you're in outdoor activity and you're, you're sweaty a lot and you have a cut those those kind of band-aids in my opinion just do a lot better to really just stay in place keep from slipping off yep so. i agree Anyway, I know this is about trauma, you know, or, but, you know, I just want to mention that. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys check out Dietrich's uh, website, uh, medicalgearoutfitters.com. And, guys, go subscribe to Dietrich's channel. It's excellent. Go see Skinny Medic. You'll, you'll see that logo. <laughs> uh, make sure you go over there and subscribe to his channel. He's a great guy. He and I have been friends for a long time. And, uh, you know, he, he's definitely kind of a, an unspoken member of the channel because, believe me, anytime we have a medical question... It gets uh, referred to Dietrich, 
And, uh, you know, if we ever have an issue and we've d made a lot of our decisions uh, in terms of what we put into our kits personally uh, based on Dietrich's recommendations, we've actually, you know, done business with him and bought things from him. Uh, he's a great dude and he's got a lot of good expertise. So if you ever have a question, let him know. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Great channel. Lots of great information. And uh, man, it, it is such a worthy watch. Make sure you go over there and check out his channel. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we go? I don't think so. You don't I think so? Uh, do you have any codes you want to share for like discounts for anybody? Or We can do the Rack Veteran 8888. Okay. It's a standing coupon code for your, your subscribers, okay. so we'll do that one. For 10 points, or what do you want to do? For, yeah, 10% off. Okay, cool. So if you use iRack Veteran 8888 on his website, you'll get 10% off, and that's for my viewers. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you for showing them some cool stuff. And guys, don't knock the whole idea of being prepared medically. I know we all want to pretend that, you know, we're going to be the only people sending rounds down range. Mm. Don't assume that it's, that it's going to be gun related. You know, slips and falls happen. Mistakes happen. You're, you're hiking. You fall down. There, you know, all kinds of things can happen uh, in life. I mean, the world is an inherently dangerous place. Things happen. People get hurt. And you can't take for granted the importance of being prepared. Uh, so consider getting yourself medically prepared. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Thank you guys for the support. Those of you who purchase man cans to support our efforts, those of you who purchase apparel such as shirts on our website or if you support us on Patreon, or if you go to websites like, like Dietrich's and you support him, that's awesome. We really appreciate that because it gives us YouTubers an ability to move forward. All the funds we earn go right back into putting more content out for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day. We'll see you next time.